Welcome to the Ponderosa. Oh, it's beautiful, Mr. Cartwright. Has the feel of a fine clipper ship. Out here all alone in the sea of green and brown. Father sees the briny in everything he looks at, Mr. Cartwright. Well, he has salt water in his veins, Laura. Well, come on in, folks. Here, let me take that, Laura. Fine quarters, Benjamin. A man's house. Well, we find it very comfortable. The boys and I are very happy here. Laura, why don't you sit down? Where are the lads? They should be finishing their chores pretty soon. I believe my daughter's anxious to see the one she made mud pies with. Oh, Father. <laughs> well, Laura, I, I guess uh, Joseph is no longer that freckle-faced boy that you remember. He's uh, grown up, just like you. Oh, I'm sure he has, Mr. Cartwright. Matthew, how about a sherry? I thank you. Laura? No, thank you. Hey, how long, uh, how long a leave of absence are you taking from the sea, Matthew? Indefinite. Indefinite? You taking an indefinite leave of absence from the sea? <laughs> you know, that doesn't sound quite like you. I owe some time to my daughter. We've been separated so much. He thought he'd finally like to know his daughter. Her mother died while I was at sea. Oh. We've been at a bit of a loss, Laura and I. Well, then I'm... I'm doubly glad you came to the Ponderosa. It's what Laura wanted. Captain White, Laura. We didn't expect you here until tomorrow. Well, this stagecoach picked up fair winds between St. Louis and Virginia City. Oh, wonderful. Good thing I was in town for the cattle auction, wasn't it? And Laura. It just doesn't seem possible. The last time I saw you in New Orleans, you, well, you were about so tall. Well, you weren't much taller, Joe. Uh, I guess 12 years does make a big difference. It certainly has in you. You're pretty as a picture. I don't make mud pies anymore, either. Hey, well, I don't eat them anymore, either. <laughs> you remember this, Joe? Did you keep this thing? Yes, all these years. You picked it for me in our garden the day you left New Orleans. That's right, I remember. That was to remember me by. Look, I wish I'd known you were coming earlier, Captain. I, I hate to run out on you like this, but I have an important engagement. But I'll see you tomorrow morning. Laura, it's real nice to see you again. Bye, don't worry. I'll be home early. I mean, young people these days seem to be so busy all the time. He really didn't expect you today. I, you must excuse him. Of course. Finishes it for today. I guess we can start breaking that bunch of wild horses next week. Yeah, I can't wait to tangle that old bay. I'm gonna ride that son of a gun this time if I have to hog time and hobble him. Let's just try sitting on him. Oh, you're funny. That gun, I sure don't like the feel of that wind. Uh, it's too early in the year for a storm. Maybe not. It's blowing hard out of the northeast. I've seen it cloud up and storm this early before. I don't know. My bunion's been hurting me ever since the day before yesterday. 
Yeah, your bunk can hurt you on a hot day in July. Yeah, there's a difference, though, Adam. It's like a toothache and a headache. They both ache in the same place, but there's a difference. No? I figure it'll be raining before the day after tomorrow. Well, if you two soothsayers are right, we're not going to be breaking horses next week. We're going to be trying to keep the house afloat. Hey, Joe. I can't understand why you want to prowl around like a lobo wolf every night when you got a pretty little gal like that right here in your backyard. Ain't she a cute little gal? Just like one of them snow flowers. What do you call them? Edelweiss. Don't you think so, Joe? I don't know. I think what? Laura's a pretty girl. Yeah, I'm sure she is. Why don't you ask? Just an observation. You two fellas go right on observing. I got some work to do on the wagon. Sure. Did you have a good night's sleep? Yes, thank you. But, uh, I'd like to apologize again for last night. I had that date and I had to keep it. Oh, it's perfectly all right. I... I didn't think I'd ever see you again after all these years, Joe. Hey, what brought you and your father clear out here anyway? He's not giving up the sea, is he? Oh, he couldn't give up the sea. It's his life. If you give up the things you live for, then you might as well be dead. Father and I have traveled all over the world together. We've even been to Africa. You've done a lot of traveling since we were kids in New Orleans. I know. It's hard to believe it. So much time has passed since then. Yeah. It sure is. You know, you're so different from the little girl I knew back home. We go on thinking that nothing changes. I'm so terribly sorry that things have to change. Flora! Flora, what is it? What's wrong? Oh, it's, 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 it's a little dizziness. I, I, it'll go away very quickly. I'm all right. It'll, I shouldn't have run so fast. Mr. Cartwright, it's nothing. I, I just felt a little weak. Well, why don't you sit down? Thank you. Let her be, Ben. I'll take her upstairs. Well, Matthew, I think she ought to... I know what's best for my own daughter. I'm perfectly all right, Father. You'll come up and lie down for a bit. I wonder what's wrong with her, Pa. Well, Matthew said she hadn't been feeling too well lately. Very delicate girl. Very much like her mother in that way. She was like fine glass, her mother. I sure hope the ponderosa weather makes her feel better. Well, I'm sure it will. Laura, you must be feeling better. You certainly did justice to your supper. I feel wonderful, Mr. Cartwright, and the supper was delicious. Good. Sure was. I think I'm going to go back here and get me another one of those legs. Another leg? That wasn't a chicken, that was a deer. I think I can handle that, too, Alan. <laughs> you know, a horse uses a chicken leg to pick his teeth with. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, I suppose you haven't had venison for some time. I The meat's good. You know, we, we don't have any uh, sharks around here, but we do run into wolves and... Horse-killing panther. How'd you like to go hunting with us tomorrow? 
Why not, Captain? Be glad to pick out a gun for you. You might even get a bear. No, I think not, Adam. The sea's my hunting place. The land tricks my legs and my eye. I think Laura and I'll just stay around the house. Why don't you go with Adam, Father? Maybe I can talk Joe into taking me for a ride up to the lake. We've had a long, hard trip. You need your rest. Oh, please, Father. I'm much too excited to rest. You'll do as I say. I'm not a child, Father. I know what's best for you. Please excuse me. I would have taken you anywhere. Australia, the South Seas. But you insisted on coming here. Oh, I thought you wanted to come here, too. I, because I thought it would please you, make you happy. Why did you suddenly care so much about making me happy? After all those years, you left me with Aunt Bronwyn and went away to sea. I had a ship to command, a job to do. Child, you can't hold on to the past. You were children then. Now you're a woman, a fine, decent woman. Father, you said I was a woman. Then don't shelter me anymore. Let me be a woman. I'm glad I can finally see the lake, Joe. I wish your father felt the same way. Oh. You mean you'd like it better if he were here, too? No, that isn't exactly what I mean. Here we go. <laughs> Ponderosa borders along the lake down there below us. As far as the eye can see to the east, all the way to the west, to the mountains. You're proud of your land, aren't you? Uh, Ponderosa's a lot more than just land. It's, it's kind of our piece of this earth. And we work it, we sweat over it. Sometimes we have to fight for it. I guess we leave part of ourselves in it. What does it give you in return? Oh, I don't know. I guess, I guess it gives the same thing. It gives the pines life. It's beautiful, Joe. It's the most beautiful country I've ever seen. And you're the most beautiful girl. Now you're making fun of me. No. I'm not making fun. There's something I'd like to show you. It's kind of a special place. take those flat stones and try to skim them across the water. Gee, I was a skinny kid, wasn't I? I didn't think so. You see that cabin over there? That's gonna be mine someday. I'm gonna fix it up. Oh, there's a view of the countryside from the other side of that cabin. You should be very happy here. Mm. You know, the first time I saw this place, I knew it was going to be mine. Do you ever have a feeling like that? I mean, you see something and right away you know it has to be yours. Yes. What's that flower? I don't know exactly. People around here call it the snow star. It looks so alone and delicate. Yeah, that's the first one I've seen up here this year. It must have bloomed before its time. I'll get it for you. Be careful, Joe. 
Oh, don't worry about me. There's nothing to this. Two, two. <laughs> It's a good thing I'm graceful. <laughs> I'll make a star for your hair. We better get those wet clothes off you. Come on inside. Storm began so suddenly. Whew. It's too far to walk back in the rain. I'm just gonna have to sit and wait it out here. I'll get a fire started. You'll be dry in no time. Who lived here, Joe? Oh, a fellow from Kentucky. Pa gave him this property and he built this cabin on it. What happened to him? Uh, he just disappeared. Didn't anyone ever find out what happened to him? Uh, not exactly. Pa says he built this cabin for his wife. She was supposed to come out here from Kentucky on a wagon train. The train was raided by Indians and she was killed. I was just a little kid at the time, but I remember him. He was a big, gentle man. Knew everything about the woods around here. They say one night he heard his wife's voice calling to him and he went out and followed it. I never saw him again. I guess people like to make up ghost stories. Is that why no one's ever lived here? Yeah. Yeah, they say the place is haunted. There. Hey, we better get you out of those wet clothes before you catch cold. But, um... Oh. Yeah, you need something to uh, put around you. Hey, here we are. It's got a few moth holes in it, but it's better than catching pneumonia. Would you turn your back, please? Hmm? Turn your back? Oh, sure. Where are they, Ben? I know Laura's with your boy. I saw them leave together. Well, I'd say they've taken shelter somewhere, man. Where can you take shelter in that howling wilderness? Probably up at the Kennedy Ranch. They were headed up that way. I want a horse, Ben. Matt, Adam and Horse are out there now looking for them. Are you going to get me that horse, or do I get it myself? You can have any horse in the Ponderosa if it'll do you any good. I've faced gales that'll tear the skin off your face. I'm not going to sit here like a frightened cabin boy. i faced them too, Matthew. We'll go out only if I think we should. If I hadn't have brought her here, this wouldn't have happened. It's your boy's doing. He's not the right kind for her. And that's not fair, Matt. Fair or no, if anything's happened to Laura, he'll answer to me for it. You don't know what you're saying. Now, will you please calm down and try to be reasonable? Reasonable? Do you think I don't know what kind of boy that is? I've seen his type before. On every ship and in every port I've sailed into. Now, wait a minute. My son may be young. And he may be foolish, but he's honest and he's honorable. I trust him with my life, and so can you. Almost dry. I wish it never dry. It's been a wonderful day, Joe. A wonderful day? First I fell in the pool, and the horse ran away, and now we're caught in a storm, and you think it's a wonderful day. Oh, you know what I mean. Just... Being with you. If I could stop this day from ending, I would. Well, I guess there isn't any way to stop a day from ending. Well, we could pretend. We used to. Oh, that's when we were kids. It's no good to pretend anymore. I wish we could bring those days back. You know, when I first saw you on the Ponderosa, I... 
I kind of thought of you as you were when you were a little girl back in New Orleans. But you're not like that. You're not like that at all. Finish up our coffee. Better get the horses settled up. Father, back. Senses, Matthew, come down. Joe. Joe. Hi. I came as soon as I heard you weren't feeling well. It's silly. I feel sort of shaky. You know, it's all my fault for getting us stuck up there. I wouldn't have missed it for anything in the world. The flower in my hair, it's gone. Yeah, well, don't you worry about that. I'll pick your whole field of flowers. You just get well. Don't leave me, Joe. No, I'll be back. I want you to rest. Think about a warm fire and, and the sun on the riverbank. I'll see you later. I love him, Father. You don't know what love is, nor does that boy. Do you? Do you know what love is? Aye, it's... It's a strong thing. It's caring so much you stop thinking about yourself. How is she? Oh, she's all right, I guess. I still think we ought to have a doctor. Well, Matthew says the doctors in New Orleans say that there's nothing wrong with it, that time won't heal. What does he have against me, Pa? Why, oh, I don't think he has anything against you, particularly. He's her father. She's been ill, and, well, what happened this morning, he's worried about her. Then why didn't he let me explain what happened? Why, why wasn't he happy to see that she was safe instead of just... He was upset, Joe. He didn't know what he was doing. He loves her very much. I love her, too, Pa. Joe, are you sure that what you and she feel isn't just a sort of sentimental attraction for each other? No. No, that's, that's what I thought it was at first. Now I just want to be with her. Well, from what I can see, she certainly wants to be with you. We want each other very much. Well, no one could ask for anything more. To be wanted is possibly the most important thing in the world. We're going to get married. Well, I don't think that's the biggest surprise I've ever had. I just hope her father will understand. Oh, I'm sure he will, Joseph. He's a stubborn man, but I know that in his heart his greatest concern is for her happiness. Be patient with him. Try to understand him the way you want him to understand you. All right, I'll try. I just hope that he does. I think Matthew and I ought to have a little talk. Maybe I can 
soften them up for you. Uh, that isn't interfering, is it? Thanks, Pop. I think Laura and I can use all the help we can get. Joe, what do you want to come up here for? This place gives me the willies. Well, they won't when I get through with it. What you figuring on doing? Hey, Joe, anytime you get that look in your eye, I always get in trouble. What you planning on doing? Oh, that's your right. I don't want to get you any trouble. You better go back with the strays. I'll take care of this myself. Take care of what yourself? No, I, I don't want to get you in any trouble. It's the first time you didn't want to get me in trouble. Besides, I kind of like trouble. What you planning on doing? You promise not to tell anybody else? Cross my heart. No, I, I don't want to get you in trouble. Dad gum you, Joe. If you're going to tell me what you're figuring on, am I going to have to bash you? All right, now, I don't want anybody to know about it. You promise? You got my word. Well, I want to fix that cabin up like new. What for her? For Laura and I to live in after we get married. Oh, you're just joking me, ain't you, Joe? As soon as she gets well. That's why I want that cabin to be a surprise. Look, I need your help, brother. Do I have it? Have it? Why, you dead gum little critter, you. I I'm your brother. Sure you got... Joe, you ain't kidding me, are you? <laughs> no, I ain't joking you. Dead gum it! You! I'm here to tell you this is the best thing that's ever happened, and you just shut up. <laughs> Here comes the bride. Here comes the bride. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Feeling better? Oh, much better. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Good. Uh, Hop Singh has some bread baking in the oven, and he has to keep an eye on it, so I said I'd bring this up to you. I hope you like beef pie. It's one of my favorites. Good. Well, good food and plenty of rest. You'll be up and around in no time. I'm very grateful for your kindness, Mr. Cartwright. Kindness? What, to the girl who's going to be my very first daughter-in-law? <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? I'm so happy I can hardly keep from crying. Well... With this kind of happiness, the color will be flooding back into this very lovely face to, to illuminate all our lives. Except my father's. Mr. Cartwright, I don't know how to explain to him about Joe and myself. I don't think he'd understand. Well, Laura, it isn't always easy for fathers to understand. Ask my boys, I'm sure they find me pretty difficult at times. He's lived his own life. Why can't he let me live mine? I know your father wants only what's best for you, dear. He'll come around. Thank you, sir. You drink up every drop of that milk? Yes, sir. What do you think? You think she'll like it? Like it? Of course she'll like it. Ain't gonna be but a couple of weeks till spring. That little old tree's gonna be full of blossom. Be the prettiest spot in the whole country. Hey, you, you know, I was thinking about something. M maybe we ought to add on an extra room. You know, just kind of a small one. Well, what do you want another room for? Now, I thought you two were supposed to be out looking for strays. Now, there are no strays around here. Oh, I, well, we just... Tell him, Joe. Well, you see, Adam, uh... Well, it seems to me, if you want Laura to like her new home, that you ought to build a porch out for a couple of feet, maybe, and then put some shutters on the windows, huh? Now, how did you know? Well, I'm the architect in the family, remember? Now, if you want an extra room, I think this is what you ought to do. <clears throat>
Hey, it's a cradle. Tell me again, Joe. Say it again. I love you. I love you more than anything else in the world. So many things I'd like to tell you, but it's supposed to be a surprise. But in just a week, that old cabin, it's going to be our home. Oh, please tell me, Joe. Tell me everything. I don't want to spoil it. Oh, you won't spoil it. Tell me what it's going to be like. All right, I'll tell you some of it. When in the front room by the fireplace, there'll be a rocker for you. Of course, it'll be a real big stuffed chair for me there. <laughs> When it's raining, we can sit in front of the fire and hear it patter on the roof. Like we did before? Just us? Mm -hmm. One in the kitchen. Adam's got a pump fixed up right there in the house, so you'll always have water for you. And one corner over, over by the fireplace where it's real warm, we're gonna... We're gonna put the... A crib? <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> where else would you put a crib, silly? We'll have lots of children. There'll be cartwrights on the Ponderosa for generations. Ours. I love you. Joe, have you talked to my father yet? No, I'm going to talk to him tomorrow morning. Make him understand how it is with us. Tomorrow I'll go into town and get the preacher. By tomorrow night you'll be Mrs. Joseph Cartwright. Oh, Joe. Darling, I love you so much. Matthew, I'd like to talk to you. Yes? What I want to say involves your daughter and my son. I'll not be discussing them. What are you trying to do to Laura? Save her from the world or keep her locked up in a cage? What? Are you trying to tell me what to do with my own daughter? Don't you realize they want to get married? There'll be no marriage between them. I'm mad. Yeah, they're not children anymore. Laura is a woman and Joseph is a man. There's a stage leaving tomorrow from Virginia City. Laura and I will be on it. Now you listen to me. Now those children are entitled to their happiness. Leave me be, Ben. I know what's best for my daughter. What are you being so stubborn about? I know what's best for my daughter, I tell you. You have three sons, three strong sons. What can you know about a daughter? A sweet, soft, beautiful girl. Who's going to die? saying, Matthew? It's the truth I've been living with every waking and sleeping hour. I couldn't bring myself to tell her. The doctor said she had a year to live. A year for me to make her happy in. Nothing of this. Nothing. Man, I could ride out the fiercest gale. I could beat down the scurviest, most mutinous crew. I, I could handle anything ever thrown at a man by nature or circumstance. But how can I tell my child, my only child, that her hope, her life is at an end? 
That's why I couldn't encourage a marriage to your boy. It would have had nothing to grow on. It would have destroyed him. Matthew. They must know. Both of them. It can't be true. They said I was going to get well. You're lying to me, Father. By the eternal, I'd give my life to make it a lie. I didn't want you to be hurt, child. Don't you see? Tomorrow? T tomorrow was to be my wedding day. Go away. Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. can't be true. She can't be dying. Joe. It's Laura. Pa, she's not in the room and nowhere in the house. Not in the house? I think I know where she is. The cabin.
Joe, I had to come and see it. It's beautiful. What's your idea of spoiling my big surprise? Well, I wanted to see our view again. We could have seen it together. I couldn't wait. We have to crowd everything we can into each day. Look, Joe. The rains made the valley so green. This is our place. Our very own. Joe! Joe, hold me! Hold me! I feel all turned around, like, like it's the end of the day instead of the beginning. I have to get you back to the ranch. You have a big day ahead of you. It's not every day a girl gets married. No, I don't want to leave here. Please, Joe. Laura, I love you so much. I feel fine now. Darling. Like that, that little white flower floating on the water. So light and delicate. You found me in that pool. And you made me a part of your life. Always. Always. Always a part of my life. Matthew's gone. He uh, understood why you weren't there to see him off. He asked me to say goodbye to you for him. And to please forgive him. Well, Adam really did a job with his cradle, you know? Joe. Someone said something to me a long time ago. When Adam's mother died, her father, he said, don't brood, son. Keep a warm spot in your heart for her, but don't carry her on your shoulders for the rest of your life. She wouldn't want that. I'll wait for you outside.
fine spring, son. I don't think I've ever seen a prettier one. <laughs>